Well, okay, if you're so hopeful, I've got to ask you another thing that uh, if you're hopeful about. Are you hopeful about Queensland or not? No. <laughs> well, are you giving up on an entire state? Yeah, that's an impossibility. Uh, look, when I was up in Queensland, I was talking to some brains. <sighs> I'm worried about it. As you guys were as well. Like, I wasn't taking you as seriously as I should have before when I got all these people saying, guys, you got to do something about Queensland. I think I'm going to start making that my focus. Now, my plan is mitigation because I don't think it's exactly... Everyone knows that this is the cycle of things. It doesn't matter how good a government is. Like when you had your whole Keatings, all good things must come to an end. There is an it's time factor when it comes to politics. And... The fact that Palaszczuk has won three terms is damn near historic. Very few governments get to that point. Asking for a fourth term is a big ask, you know. Um, when you look at presidents in the United States, it is very, very rare that you will have the Republicans in for three terms. It's very rare that you have the Democrats in for three terms. It's wear and tear of being in government. Eventually it catches up to you. This is not... And I repeat, this is not Anastasia Palaszczuk's thought, uh, fault. Everyone's always talking about how shit Queensland is. There's some truth to that because you can't keep far north Queensland and southern Queensland happy at the same time. It's an impossible ask, especially with a mainstream party. It's always just going to start fracturing. That's true. You look at the numbers, though. That state has rarely ever been in better shape than it has been under Anastasia Palaszczuk. When people are talking about a hospital nightmare... In most of the important metrics when it comes to healthcare, Queensland is up there with the best of them. It's usually getting the one, two, or three mark when it comes to these things. Uh, more often than not, one or two in terms of the healthcare metrics. This is the big push that Chris Fully, the opposition leader, is going for. He's, you know, it's a healthcare nightmare. Uh, when, you know, the, the youth crime thing, which is massively overblown and both sides so you have your abcs and your guardians being like oh my god they're being so mean to children and then you've got murdoch press being like they're not being mean enough and they're deliberately doing it so that they can try and fracture the government the reality of the situation is they're doing an all of the above solution to it and once you get chris fully in what's he going to do he's going to cut all of the rehabilitation programs which are having marked success um you know, the environment, when it comes to that, that's horrific to me. That's why I'm so scared about all of this because anything that the New South Wales Liberals did looks like nothing to what the LNP do when they're in power. The environmental destruction that they're responsible for in a single term is catastrophic. What I'm particularly scared about is that Chris Fully is going to get in and he's not going to be anywhere near as insane as Campbell Newman was. And so he could probably stick around for 10 years. That is far worse than Campbell Newman being in for one term. Far worse. My aim now, and this is where I need your help, my fellow Podites, is if you are in Queensland, can you please make it your mission to try and convince a few nutbag Greens to vote Labor? Can you please convince a few of your elder relatives to vote for Labor over the LNP? The ways that you would do it is, come on, she handled COVID expertly. The oldies know it. That's why she got the third term. Just remind them of that. Just remind them of like, dude, remember Campbell Newman? It's just going to be that again. It always is. It's Joe Bioki Peterson again. That That is that party. You cannot let them win. When it comes to the Greens, it's always the same thing. We're just going to promise fly in, the, fly in the sky bullshit. All of these snake oil salesman things, if you get us in, it's going to be like the Jetsons. It's a lie. Like, the, the, the practical reality of the situation is, Anastasia Palaszczuk, as I was just pointing out then, she has done things that no other government could pull off. Huge things. Stopping all of these unbelievably damaging environmental disaster policies that were enacted under the LNP. It took her two terms because she didn't have a majority, but she got there. Uh, she would be implementing more of those if it wasn't for North Queensland. Like, people are always saying, why can't it be more like West Australia and Victoria with their environmental policies? Give her a wide enough majority. She'll get there. We're not even asking for that at the moment. We're just asking to get her over the line. But I will say this. At the very least, let's get it to the point that the Labor Party can win the next election after that because if it's a wipeout 
like it was under Campbell Newman. There's not going to be this them clawing it back from seven seats. If Chris Fully does like a Gladys Berejiklian, doesn't look like he's doing too much, people can't really sense it on the ground, it's slowly deteriorating, they'll be in for 10 years. That is a far worse position to be in because... People always ask, like, oh, what is what are they implementing? Dude, have you seen the green jobs and energy plan? It is the most comprehensive plan in the country. We're talking $64 billion of investment into transforming Queensland into a green energy hub of not just Australia, the world. That's Palaszczuk's policy. You, you're worried about climate change. Queensland could be one of the key fulcrums that implements massive change not just in Australia, globally. This has huge knock-on effects. You invest that much money in a place like Queensland. These are things that are worth fighting for. So, okay, so obviously you can't really... Uh, uh, even You can't even play devil's advocate to defend the libs on uh, environmental policy. But, like, the two things that you mentioned was healthcare is a mess and youth crime. So let's, let's talk about healthcare first. Healthcare is a mess throughout the country is it more of a mess in queensland because i know even in new south wales like there's a reason why chris Minns is putting so much money into healthcare because you know we are running short of like nurses paramedics so it's i feel i feel like this is an australia-wide problem clearly but is it a particularly bad issue in queensland no as always the it's a particularly bad issue in queensland because all you have is the murdoch press in queensland so they're able to i hate this phrase but cherry pick data that makes it look like Queensland is this hospital hellscape. When in reality, you look at the stats, overall it's doing very well. Exactly the same with youth crime. Crime has been going down consistently under Anastasia Palaszczuk. Yes, there is a small contingency of youth crime that is particularly egregious in Queensland. The general trajectory, even of youth crime, is... She just passed this. This is, the, this is the lowest stats of youth crime recidivism, as in, like, doing the, going out of the system and committing more crimes. This is the lowest that it has ever been since records began. Yeah, but youth crime was, like, a major issue in Victoria last year. Like, is it, again, specifically bad in Queensland? It's, I mean, look... It's the same it's, sort it's of trend. It's worse than it is in any other state. I'll give it that. But like what happened in Victoria when it was the worst in any, in, in any other state, Daniel Andrews just started working on it and a couple of years later, like, it's it's a lot better. Like, yes, you're, you're going to point to all of these articles saying, what about these guys getting mugged? What about this car theft here? What about this murder? But this is the big lie that the press are always trying to pull. And this is something that I think you need to start pressing amongst all of your friends and family. There is this myth that the press are always trying to pull in people's heads that if only we got this government in, the world would turn into a utopia. There'd be no homeless people. There'd be no criminals. What are you talking about? To quote the Joker, we live in a society. There's always going to be criminals. Mm. There's always going to be homeless people. This is not... There are things that governments cannot do. And this is the thing that I think... This is what I'm hearing over and over again. This is a very powerful message to get into people's heads. People, this is great because, uh, like, we live in a world filled with a bunch of Redditors always attacking us, so we think that this is how the general population thinks. They don't. The general population is willing to give government slack. They give, they're very willing to give government slack. They know that the government is not going to solve all of the world's problems. They know that that's wishful, weird thinking that just gets niched and, and like... I don't know, fetishized amongst like internet circles. What they want is a government that is batting for them. That's all they want. That's all they ask for in a government. Yeah, but here's another point that I think is but mis- isn't isn't hang on. Sorry, when it comes to Pakistan and with Imran Khan, don't you think that that was a big part of his appeal? It was like no one thought that he was just going to turn Pakistan into Turkey overnight. No one thought that, but they thought he's giving it a go. Yeah, he's giving it moving in the right direction. Yeah, that's why he was popular. But like uh, my my other like the thing that sort of missed in this youth crime debate because you're we're focusing on the effect that youth crime rate is high. What is the government doing about it? But like, if you're gonna gut social services and any kind of funds for what we what the liberals or the coalition calls like handouts, 
if you're just gonna like constantly starve your population of this for like a decade, yeah, there's gonna be like youth crime as a result. Yes. This is directly connected. Yes. The higher your poverty rate is, the higher your crime rate goes. Absolutely. And so like if you're saying that youth crime is high, I'm gonna focus on what's causing that. Because it's much because like at the end of the day, like what what are we supposed to do? Just jail fucking fourteen year olds indefinitely in solitary confinement? Or we ensure that these guys have like a a family structure that is not constantly starved of money that it keeps breaking. Dude, the number one cause of families breaking up is fiscal uh, fiscal problems. And divorces. It's divorces, yeah. That's that's essentially why your family unit breaks up in the first place. Like it's not cheating. It's not like people it's literally financial stress causes families to break down. And if financial Bang on. stress is gonna cause families to break down, you're gonna have a lot of kids that aren't being looked after properly because their parents are too focused on fucking putting food on the table and I guess fighting with each other. Yeah. So I like I honestly think this youth crime could be put back into the liberal category. It was like you caused this. Yeah. And this is not something that is fixed in a decade or two decades. Mm. This is a long-term... And also, on top of this, look, Ali's absolutely right. That is the number one cause of this, the breakdown of the family unit. But it is one factor. It is one factor. There is a myriad of factors that are involved in this. That's one. It is a long-term fix. And by fix, all we're talking about... The same with homelessness, same with crime in general. It's not like it's going to end ever. Mm. It's just going to get better. That's all you can aim for in these instances. But it's also true when people are saying, oh, they're being so harsh on kids. Dude, you do need to understand this. So, like, psychopaths exist. And psychopaths exist with their children. I've seen documentaries on this where they used to have lock-up houses for kids that are psychopaths. And you hear them and it's like, yeah, I killed my like baby brother with a brick. It's like, dude, you can't do anything with someone like that. They're just fucked in the head maybe one day we'll have some miracle drug that like gets their chemicals back in the right way or something like that but in the meantime we do like, have it. Dude, there is things mushrooms. you just need to do to just prevent and like get those people out of society like you know that's one element of it as well but that is all the liberals are focusing on just that just punishment no go and face your victim i, I can't believe this i read this stat the other day from the press from the murdoch press they were saying Anastasia Palaszczuk's huge failure on crime, uh, her recidivism program of making the victims have a conversation with their perpetrators. Oh, it only has, how's this, a 50% success rate. So that one program reduces repeat offenders by 50%. That's pretty good. And they're reporting it as a massive failure. Because it's not Because it's not 100%. Yeah, I this did, is the I press circumstance 50%. that you're up against. Like, and the people sitting there saying, "Oh, I wonder why Palaszczuk is going so low." Yeah, there's some wear and tear to it. But I it's would also, take thirty percent. This is the media ecosystem she's in. I genuinely would take thirty percent. I I'd would take that's fifteen. A, yeah, I take five. As long as the trajectory one in twenty. Yeah, it's not. That's kind. Of, that is ridiculous. But so you're saying the main issue is it's time. People get bored. It's time. It's the Murdoch press. It's also just people sitting there and coming up with their weird little conspiracy theories in their living rooms and saying, yeah, fuck that. That's because of her. It's all of those issues. Uh, Dude, I wonder why, like, Queensland that faces the brunt of the climate catastrophes. I mean, bushfires are everywhere and shit, but flooding is horrible in Brisbane. Oh, yeah. Like, why doesn't, like, environmental uh, policies take as much traction? They do in the south. Oh, it's the north. The north cannot stand anything remotely environmental. They see it as commie. So because they're not as affected by it. But aren't they? No, like they are. They're more shit? affected by it. They just look. The old phrase "going tropo." It's if you've ever been to Cairns or Townsville, you can see it. Most people are insane up there. Yeah. Well, uh, whenever the elections are, we we've got to try as much as possible. That's what I'm saying. So, as always, it's so important for you to join your union. It's so important for you to join your local branch so you can see what needs to be done in your electorate. Because the one thing that we always have is that if you have a popular candidate in your seat, or at the very least, they're liked enough in their seat, doesn't matter what hit job you do on them, 
you would have to focus like they did with Jackie Trad because they knew that she was a real strong point of the last electorate. So the Greens and the Murdoch press teamed up to get rid of her. And there was also a demographic shift, that's true. But it was a very concerted effort to get rid of her because she was keeping the government on track. Other than that, though, they can't focus their energy on 20 candidates that are popular and liked and known in the community. Yeah, just put up, like, footy players in marginal seats in North Queensland. Always what I said. Footy Should players. Absolutely do it. Cricket players. But to hope, preferably from that area, you don't want to, like, parachute some <laughs> yeah. Collingwood player from Melbourne yeah. all of a sudden. I'll take a coach. Yeah. Someone that, you know... Is well liked. Good in government society, is like yeah. a good team. You need a strategy. Winning. Yeah, you need a Winning strategy. Formula they right need to there. do a bit of an elbow. They need to like appeal. It's like, hey, I'm I'm harmless. I'm good. Well, that's what they've been coasting on for the last ten years. It can only, but that's that's elbow's strategy. He's trying to do what Anastasia Palaszczuk did in Queensland. She's just trying to stay there for ten years because, as always, you can get more done in ten years than you can in three. Um, is what's her name coming back? Terry Butler. State? Don't think so. I think that Terry Butler's kind of a bit done with politics. I don't know. I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah, after Jordan Peterson owned her on Q&A. Yeah, yeah, take it. Shay's done. Take it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So that's very important. And I think a big thing with all of this is just like I was saying with Dog Pounds, the best thing that you can do is Zoomers is go to your local dog pound and say, I'll take photos of these animals and we'll circulate them on Facebook and TikTok and all that shit. Because they're oldies, they don't get it. It's exactly the same with Palaszczuk's team. They're oldies, they don't get social media. And it's probably your local member. They're oldies and they don't get social media. And if they got somebody that was a little bit savvy, that could give them some internet clout, you would be doing so much more than door knocking could ever do. Mm. Yeah, man, here's open... Let's see how things work. I wouldn't want a party that is. Let's just put it this way: destroying. I honestly think the LNP is the worst government in the developed world. I think that the Republicans are more sensical on the environment than the LNP are. (laughs) 